Okay, so good morning everyone. Today I'm going to be giving you an overview of the main types of records held in the National Archives collection relating to passenger arrivals and how you can find and access them. You will have been given a one-page cheat sheet from me. This can be used as a guide um, to help you remember what I've spoken about today because it can be a little bit confusing but I'll do my best to make it straightforward. Okay, so on screen here you will see a list of the main types of immigration records held in the National Archives collection. The National Archives is responsible for the storage and public access of records created by the Australian Commonwealth Government. Only records of permanent value are kept and this includes records of immigration and immigration records make up a very large proportion of our collection. According to the law, the public have a right to access um, our records in the collection once they're over 20 years old. Okay, so this is what our immigration records look like. Today, most people use our internet to look at our collection. Most of the records are listed on our online database record search and many have been digitised and can be viewed online and this is what they look like. For those records that are not yet digitised, you can choose to pay for them to be digitised and upload to our website or you can go into one of our reading rooms and view them for free. And many of our passenger records have been digitised and I'll be showing you those throughout the talk. Okay, so after Israel, Australia has the highest proportion of foreign-born people in its population, around one in four. Passenger records, such as passenger arrival lists and passenger cards, can provide evidence of a person's arrival in Australia and therefore they're a valuable source of information for family historians and researchers. Our shipping records start in the 19th century but go right through to the 20th century to the point where we have aircraft passenger arrivals for migrants entering the country. Most of our passenger records are arranged by the date of the arrival, the name of the ship and the port of arrival. So unless you know these details, your search can be quite time consuming. Today I'll be focusing on passenger arrivals for Queensland ports However, our Canberra office does hold passenger records for all Australian ports from 1924. Okay, so this is the homepage of the National Archives of Australia, www.naa.gov.au. I'm going to take you to the record search database so you can see how you can conduct a search for passenger list using our website. So, I'll just... I've just circled them in red so you can see what I'm looking at. So you can see the top of the website, there's a collection tab. You just click on that and then there'll be a line there that says search the collection. Click on that and that will take you to our record search database. Sorry, the next thing you have to do is click on record search, which I've highlighted in red there. And once you've clicked on that, this is what the database looks like. And you will see one of the tabs along the top there is called Passenger Arrivals. That's what I'm going to start off with today. So we'll have a look at this first. Okay, so this is the Passenger Arrivals Index. It covers the period 1898 to 1972 for ships arriving into Australia. And it also includes aircraft from the 1940s. You will see there... Just on the side there it says dates going up to 1966. Just ignore that because we have increased the dates so they are now available to the early 1970s and we will be continuing to add to that. The Passenger Arrivals Index was originally based on our passenger lists for ships going into the port of Fremantle. However, it now includes other ports as well. Most um, passenger voyages coming from Europe made Fremantle their first port of call and then they went around up the east coast. Uh, the Fremantle lists include names for people, regardless of whether they got off in Fremantle, they will include the names for other ports in Australia where they disembarked. So they are a really rich resource for family historians. If you were looking for Chinese migrants arriving into Queensland, the ships generally came from Hong Kong directly into Brisbane or other Queensland ports. They didn't go through Fremantle. Okay, so I'm now going to show you how to conduct a search on our passenger arrival index. I've just entered a person's surname. But if you have the information, you can enter the ship's name and the year of arrival or the port of arrival. 
Having said that, it's better to start off with a broader search and just enter a surname because the more information you put in, the um, less results you're going to get back. So start off with a surname. Unless you have a really common surname and you're going to get hundreds and hundreds of hits, then perhaps enter a year of arrival or a ship. Not all passenger index entries include the given names or the ports of embarkation or disembarkation. So perhaps don't include a given name initially because they're not all indexed to include the names. Um, and if your initial search is very specific, like I just said, you're going to have less chance of finding what you need. Um, also, if your search is unsuccessful, remember to try different spellings, alternate spellings of names. Um, anyway, so let's see how I go with the search for the surname Frau. Okay. So I know that the family I'm looking for includes the father, Andrea Frau, and his wife, Paola, and his daughter, Maria. Um, you will see that Andrea arrived in August 1949 into Brisbane on the ship the Napoli, and his wife and daughter came out about 18 months later. They're listed down the bottom, December 1950 on the Suriento. After World War II, men were needed in North Queensland to cut the sugarcane crops. The government allowed hundreds of Italian men to come out on a short-term basis and often their wives and children followed later on and eventually they were allowed to remain in Australia on a permanent basis. If you don't know approximately when a person arrived in the country or which port they arrived at, it can be difficult to ascertain which person is yours, particularly if you say have a you know, 10 Andrea Fraus come up. And this is where you need to use other immigration records to try and narrow down the person, you know, using dates of birth and other details. Um, you can see on the right the digital copies. So all the shipping passenger lists on this um, index have been digitised. So I'm going to open up the one for Andrea Frau now so you can see what that looks like. So this is what it, the screen you'll be taken to when you click on that view digital copy button. So his passenger list is an eight page passenger list. You can see there I found him on page five of eight. Um, I'll zoom in now so you can actually see his name. So I've just highlighted that in red there. So it just gives his name, I think his age, departed Naples and arrived in Brisbane. OK, so we'll go back to this page now. Um, so there's his daughter Marie and his wife Paola. I'll click on their digital record now. They arrived 18 months later and we'll see if we can see their name. So this one, when I open this one up, it's only a one-page file um, and their names are not on it. Unfortunately, I can't really explain why this is, as there could be multiple reasons, but I think it's a good example in how you need to really be a detective to find a person's name on a passenger list. Because we can't see their names on this passenger list, I'm going to show you how to look elsewhere. So today I'll be showing you that we can find this family's name on at least three to five different sources. So don't give up when you go to that and you think, why is their name not there? because unusual things like this happen. So this is another good example. I recently had a client in our reading room who came in and wanted to find his own passenger arrival record, so he knew the date of arrival, obviously, the name of the ship. Um, and I thought, OK, this is going to be an easy one. So we looked up his name on the passenger index. I put in his name, the ship's name, the date, and nothing came up. And after some detective work and looking at other records, I realised that the ship that he arrived in the family name, the surname, was actually not indexed for some reason. Um, so entering a surname was not going to help us at all, which was very frustrating because, of course, that is what you were going to put into the index. This just highlights the difficulty in searching for passenger records. Even when you have the information that you want and you think it's going to be straightforward, you really need to try all search possibilities, including different spellings of names and then looking elsewhere, really, because this was almost impossible to find given there was no surnames. But we did find it eventually by being detectives and using all the records. So just remember that if you have an unsuccessful search. 
Okay, so we've looked, that was the passenger arrivals index. That's our only index at the National Archives for passenger arrival records. Next, I'm going to talk to you about Series J715. So the National Archives office in Brisbane holds inwards and outwards passenger lists for all Queensland ports, with those for Brisbane dating from as early as 1852. The Brisbane passenger arrivals have recently been digitised and are now available for viewing online. They used to all be on microfilm, but now they're all on our website. They cover a large date range from 1852 to 1964 and include ships coming from overseas ports and also some coastal voyages. These passenger lists are arranged by the date of arrival and the port of arrival. So unless you know this information, your search may be quite time consuming. Having said that, there is a name index um, for the time period 1852 to 1899 that was created by the Queensland Family History Society. You can access that here at the State Library and also on Find My Past, but that's only for that time period. And there is also an index of the names of all the ships which was compiled by Charlie Nolan and is available with us and at the State Library. So if you don't know the date of arrival but you do know the ship's name, you can go and look up that information so you can then get the date from that index. Um, and when I was searching for Andrea Frau again using the J715, I did have to consult um, Charlie's list because I just wanted to be sure that this ship arrived on this date. You'll see that these are very, very long lists, so I really wanted to know the date before I went trawling through hundreds and hundreds of pages. So I'll show you how to search for these in a moment. Um, I just wanted to show you these because they're pretty. The earliest passenger list we have for Brisbane Moreton Bay is 1852. And this is what the earlier lists look like. The one on the right is the Humboldt Meyer, which arrived in Brisbane on the 8th of November 1870 with over 300 Prussian migrants on board. Okay, so now getting on to how to search in series J715. So what you need to do is go to our record search database and go to the advanced search screen. Um, when searching the lists, you really need to know uh, the approximate date someone arrived. So you need to enter the series number, J715, in the series search field. And then in that date range, I've put in 1949 because I want to show you um, trying to search for that Andrea Frau record again. Okay, so when I clicked on search there, it's brought up this one record. It's got a date range of 1st of November 1948 to 30th of April 1950. So this should include the ship that he arrived on, which was August 1949. And that view digital copy button that I've circled there in red, you just click on that. And as I just said before, you can see that it's a very large record. So this one has 1,485 pages. This is why you want to know approximate dates because you be scrolling through. There is a jump to page facility at the bottom there, so I just sort of put in around, I was guessing, you know, around 800 pages. I found the list for the Napoli on page 685. Um, and I'll just zoom out so you can see that now. I think it was only a one-pager, yes. And this is another interesting one. For some reason, the passenger list is only one page and only records one person, and Andrea Frau is not listed. Even though it is definitely the correct ship and the correct date, says the Napoli, it says 23rd of August 1949, into Brisbane. So, <laughs> it can be quite frustrating. When searching through J715 passenger lists, if you can't find what you're looking for, I would also suggest that you search a few months either side, um, as sometimes the pages can be filed out of order. So, for example, I decided to scroll through a few months and I did find the Napoli, the same ship, further on in this digital record. However, there was no date listed on that list, so I couldn't be sure. And to make matters worse, it did have a proper passenger list, but for some reason, um, letter F was not there. So, I was like, great. <laughs> so, I think this is a really good example that you need to look in several places when searching for passenger arrivals and doing just one search in one, for, in one resource, in one source, is not necessarily going to give you the result. 
Um, it can be very frustrating if you find a record like this one. Um, however, as I just said, there are multiple places that we can search and we did actually find Andrea Freire on the passenger arrival index at the beginning. So we were successful there, but not here. I just put that picture there just to make this slide look not so boring. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so I also did a search for the arrival in J715 of his wife, Paolo and daughter Maria, and unlike Andrea's arrival record, um, my search for them was successful. And yeah, so they're just there highlighted in red. That was on page 693 of their file. So they're all about that same size, they're quite large. And I am glad that I found this because um, if you remember at the beginning of the talk, I did not find their name on that list using the passenger index. It was kind of re a reversal for both of them, really. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad that I found that there. OK, so, so far we've looked at the passenger arrivals index and the J715 Brisbane inwards list, which have now been digitised. Another place where you can find passenger arrivals is in our Brisbane Series J25. Series J25 consists of our main Queensland immigration case files created by the Department of Immigration from post-World War II, so it's from 1946. Most files in this series are about a particular migrant, but there are also ships passenger lists. Um, dating from post-World War II up to 1976 and from then it becomes aircraft arrivals. So you can see here I've done a search for the ship Napoli. This is how you search for J25. You need to enter J25 in the series number and in the keywords field you need to put the name of the ship Napoli and make sure you include the keyword um, nominal. Otherwise if you don't you'll get a lot of individual case files on people. We just only want the shipping lists. So, um, when I do that search, I got five results, which is good. Um, these four there relate to the Napoli arriving in Brisbane between 1949 and 1952. Um, and so that's the one that Andrea Frau will be on, that top one there for August 1949. They've all been digitised. Um, not all the J25 passenger lists are digitised, but most are. We are working on that proactively, so many, many of them are. Um, the J25 passenger lists are quite good because often they will just contain that extra information, such as letters and just more details about the voyage. On the, pay, on the left side here you can see, and says Andrea Frown, it's got his visa was issued at Naples on the 13th of July, so just before his voyage. And on the right, up the top, it says his address where he will be going with S. Frau, probably the person who sponsored him, and going to live at Ingham. I also did a J25 search for the Suriento to see if I could find the ship for his wife and daughter, and they were there as well. That's their file for the Suriento, and they're listed at the top there together. OK, so quite often we need to use other immigration records in the collection to help us in narrowing down our dates of arrival or other useful information that will then assist us in actually locating a passenger list. If you don't know when a person arrived in Australia or the name of the ship, you can do a search for other immigration records using our record search database. So I've done a general search for, I put in the name Andrea Frau and Four records came up in our Brisbane office. Luckily, they were all digitised, so I can show you some of these now. So these pages here come from the family's main immigration case file, which is in series J25. That's the series we were just looking at with the, with the um, passenger list. Their file is 114 pages, so it's quite a large file and includes a lot of information and also some beautiful photographs. And these two pages are also taken from that same J25 
um, immigration file on them. I just wanted to show you these pages because they really highlight the fact that if you have no idea when someone arrived in Australia, if you can get their immigration record, you can often find those details. So I've highlighted in red on the left there, it tells us the date the Napoli arrived and into Brisbane. So it's giving us his arrival details. And the same for Paola, it's got the Suriento 1915 to Fremantle. So this is where I actually started my search off for this talk, was I went to the immigration records first and then I thought, OK, I'm going to go and find the passenger lists and then did get a bit frustrated when they were these passenger lists that were coming up with no names on it and things like that. But I am glad in a way because it does highlight the difficulty in searching the passenger lists and how you need to go about it. So the next one, this is the front of Andrea Frau's alien registration card, which again provides us with details of his arrival in Australia. So I think all those four immigration records that I found on the database all provide us with his arrival details. This is the back of that card. Um, this is where they had to report on their employment and um, change of address, change of address or employment to the Department of Immigration. So this provides invaluable research resource for family historians. So BP 9 slash 3, that series, contains personal statements and declarations of aliens entering the state of Queensland. These details were collected by the customs officer and you can see here on this record it also includes his um, arrival details, the name of the ship and the date. So you'd be pretty happy, I think, if um, this was your family and you found all of these <laughs> records. Next one's a BP25 slash one. These contain alien registration papers completed by the Department of Immigration for aliens entering Queensland. Um, and again on this, it's got the Napoli written at the top. So it's got his arrival details on this one as well. So that's just a bit of a snapshot of the four files that I found on that family. So by searching for the Frau family, I hope I've given you an example of how you can find a passenger arrival record for a person who arrived into Brisbane. Um, you have seen that we've got passenger records for people coming from all over Europe. We also hold records of arrivals from Asia and the UK. For British migrants, you might not, might not find as many records as they were not required to register as an alien and for a time period they um, did not need to become citizens as well. Um, and I will show you some um, British passenger arrival records next. So as I said before, the J25 series are quite good because they do contain extra information about a voyage. This is a great file on the voyage of the Multan, which departed Tilbury in April 1949. And as you can see on the right, this passenger list also includes the passenger's occupation, which is quite good. The Multan was a Royal Mail ship that was built in 1923. It served in the Second World War and afterwards it was predominantly used um, to carry 10 pound poms to Australia under the Assisted Passage Scheme. So this is one of those voyages. In April 1949, the Multan arrived at Tilbury the day after a passenger, 69-year-old Richard Allen, had died. The cause was smallpox. For the next three days, the Multan was quarantined before any of the passengers or crew could disembark. And in this time, um, five more passage, um, passengers died. Um, this is a letter that was on this file as well, so I really like seeing, you don't get this that often, but I'll read this one out to you so you don't have to worry about trying to read it. Dear sir, I wonder if you could help me regarding my brother James Nelson. He was a passenger on the Multan leaving England on the 28th of April. I had no word from him since except a card from England, but I've heard from neighbours that had friends on the same boat that he had gone through a serious operation on board ship and it meant life or death. Now, would you please tell me if this is true or not, and if 
so the nature of his operation. I'm very worried about him as I'm his only sister and I don't know how I could get in touch with him. I did write to England but they advised me to write to you. Please answer this and let me know at your earliest as the suspense is terrible. Do not notify him as he would be very annoyed if he thought I was worrying. <laughs> Please answer soon and oblige, Mrs John Oliver. And this is the reply from the Commonwealth Migration Officer. Um, I refer to your letter regarding the health of your brother James Neeson, who was a passenger on the Multan. As far as I'm aware, your brother disembarked at Brisbane in perfect health on the 23rd of June 1949. Mr Neeson proceeded to employment at Ipswich, Queensland, and they're just telling her where correspondence can be forwarded to him. Okay, BP 23-1 includes 116 passenger lists for British migrants arriving into Brisbane from 1946 <coughs> to 1951, so it's not a great date range. Um, this is the nominal role for the arrival of the Ormond into Brisbane in 1948. We do know from press reports that the Thomas family shown here were the largest family on the ship. I think there's about seven children there. And it's, again, it's got their occupations, which is quite good. Okay, BP 26-1, that series are passenger arrival cards for Queensland ports, same date range again, 1946-51. to 51. These were all created by the Department of Immigration. All these records are listed on the database at um, item level, so all you would have to do is do a search for that person's name and these records will come up. So they are all on the database. Um, you can do a name search and you will find them. You don't have to remember the series numbers or anything like that for these. Okay, so we've looked at arrivals from Europe and the UK. If you're trying to find arrivals from China, it is a good idea to search our collection of CEDTs, which are certificates exempting from the dictation test. Chinese people needed to have a CEDT if they were travelling in and out of Australia, so it allowed them to get back into the country when they returned home. Um, not only that, but they provide photographs and they're just very beautiful records. Um, okay, so the National Archives, as I said earlier, also holds aircraft passenger arrivals. In Brisbane, the main series is J922, and this starts at 1934. There are about 700 aircraft lists in this series, um, and at the moment there's about almost 200 that are digitised, so they're not all digitised. I've just entered the series there, that's how you would do a search, and I'm searching for 1968 aircraft arrivals. So I got 27 results there um, for aircraft arriving and departing in 1968. You can see that some are digitised and some are not on the right there. If it's not digitised, you can order online to have that digitised or just come into our Brisbane office and view the original record in the reading room. And this is what they look like. So they're fairly large files again. This one is 280 pages. The information contained within these files is not extensive and it often will only include just a surname like that, but we do use these regularly for people who, provide, who need proof of arrival into Australia. Okay, so to conclude my segment, I will briefly take you through our Destination Australia website. The aim of Destination Australia is for people to be able to, to, be able to share their migration story. So Destination Australia includes thousands of photographs of people arriving in Australia, taking English classes at work and at play, celebrating festivals and um, religious ceremonies. You can search these photographs by keyword or there is many categories that you can also search under. So I've just searched under the category of migrant arrivals and transport ships, so that's just one of the categories that you can go into. 
and there, there is thousands of photographs. If you see yourself or know someone in a photograph, you can tag them as well and um, add information. So it is all about sharing information, which is really great. And the other main part of the Destination Australia site, so it's photographs and stories are the two main parts. You can check out the stories and photographs other people have added to this website. Um, these personal, um, family or community stories, they're all arranged in themes. I've just done a search under the theme of the journey. Um, and they provide, they show the rich and varied experiences of migrants who came to Australia post-World War II. This is the Brisbane National Archives office. We're located at Cannon Hill. We're open Wednesday, Thursday and Friday from 9 till 4.30. Now, if you're searching for passenger arrival lists and you need some help, you can't find what you're looking for, you can go to the collection tab, which I showed you earlier, and then click on ask us a question. Here we have different categories. Um, so you can click on immigration records or passenger arrival records, enter all the information as much as possible of what you're trying to look for. We aim to respond to inquiries within 30 business days. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>